Hi, and welcome to module six of lecture seven. This is the last module in the lecture seven, which is the first lecture on probability, and it's gonna be the shortest one and possibly the shortest one of this entire course. Um, here, having gone through some really important definitions and concepts in probability and classical probability and Bayes rule and combinatorics, we're gonna conclude by giving a couple of small um, empirically useful definite probability definitions, probably related definitions, that it will come up in stats courses. We're not going to talk about it very much at all. There's a little more in the book, but this is just for completeness, more or less. Um, the first one is the, the odds of an event of some event happening. The odds of an event A happening are defined as the chance they happen, divided by the chance they don't happen. That's it. <laughs> That's pretty quick, right? That's the odds of an event happening. The odds ratio of two events happening, event one, the ratio of the odds, so A1 to not A1 over A2 to not A2. That's the odds ratio and related to a maximum likelihood and you will see all that in your stats classes. Um, but now you know what these probabilities mean and how A leads to not A and so on. So this should look more familiar to you when you come upon it in your stats classes. That's the first one. Um, Second one is the relative risk ratio, which tells you the relative risks of some events happening between two different cases. Um, here, you might want to say, okay, the example we give in the book, for instance, is on the chance of going to war if the base case is war between an autocracy and, and democracy. So one autocracy, one democracy. Then what's the relative chances of going to war if you're two autocracies or two democracies or so on? In general, if the relative risk ratio is equal to one, then the risk of going to war, for instance, between both cases you're examining are, is identical. Um, if it's greater than one, then the risk of going to war or whatever else you're talking about in the first case is greater than the risk in the second case, the base case you're comparing to. If it's less than one, then the risk of going to war or whatever else you're talking about is less in the first case than in the base case you're comparing to. Sometimes these are done in fractions. Um, so, you know, 0.2 or whatever. Sometimes it's done in percentages, say 20%. And relative risk ratios can take anywhere from zero to infinity. Um, if, for instance, if the base chance is very, very low and the chance is, the risk is very, very high and the one you're comparing it to it, you get a very, very large number, right? Because something like, uh, you know, if the risk is like two over 0 0.01 or whatever, that's a large number, um, so 200, but you can get larger. Um, sometimes it's represented as said in, in um, decimals, in proportions, sometimes in probabilities, sorry, in percentages, that's true for all probabilities, actually. We've dealt most, mostly with proportions because they're the most natural way of representing probabilities because then they can come between zero and one. But you can do all the stuff we did by multiplying by 100% and looking between zero and 100%. They mean the same thing, but in general, you'll find probabilities specified in political science as proportions, not percentages. That's actually it already. <laughs> I said this is the shortest one of all the modules, probably. I don't know going forward yet, but so far, certainly. Um, and this concludes our introduction to probability, sort of basic probability concepts. In the next two lectures, we're gonna go through um, more complex things related to probability, distributions. And distributions are proved absolutely central to everything we're gonna do in political science and all sorts of sciences, and they're worth a couple of lectures just to go through them. In the next lecture, we'll cover discrete distributions in which particular, um, random variables, as we'll, as we'll define them, can take one of a discrete number of, um, one of a discrete set of possible values. In the following lecture, we'll do continuous random variables that can take a continuum of values. Until then, thank you very much.